that handsome hero we all love and adore monkey king Who's got demons screaming when he knocks at their door? Monkey King! Who's that simian swinging on his way to the top? Who's gonna what? keep on fighting and never ever stop? Monkey King! Monkey King! Monkey King! Monkey King. <laughs> yeah! What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Channel Teachers Podcast. I am of course your host Jay. And joining me is my assistant, or at least one of my assistants. I have no idea where the other one is. Brian. Hello, people. I'm here. We have no idea where Tony is. Tony is absent right now. Maybe he'll just randomly teleport into the call in the middle of the recording. We'll find out. You'll be just as surprised as we are. But anyways... We are continuing Movie Month once again, and this time we'll be covering yet another movie that we react to the trailer to on this podcast, and that is, of course, the Netflix animated film, Monkey King, which is like a animated prequel to Journey to the West. So, you know, uh, we'll be discussing that in uh, more detail in a bit, uh, but before we do that... We're going to go ahead and jump right into the news with Brian. Okay, peoples. Uh, well, really quick there, Jay. Uh, dealer's choice. Uh, mad or sad first? Uh, we should probably start with sad. Well, so I hate to say it, but we have another death. Okay. Who Celebrity is it death. Who is it now? Uh, one of our guys, probably kind of an underappreciated actor for how good he actually was. But, uh, Ron Cephas Jones. Name doesn't ring a bell. Uh, William from This Is Us. Fish from what? Luke Cage. Oh, William Cypress Jones. Oh, not William. No, no, not William. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh. William. Oh, dude. That hurts. Yeah. His death in This Is Us fucking broke me. Uh, did they, uh, uh, was it announced uh, how he passed, or? I think it was the big C. Ah, wow. Crazy. Well, rest in peace, yep. man. He was great. I, I loved him in This Is Us. Yeah. He was, he was fantastic. And Fish in, uh, Luke Cage. I completely forgot he, he was in Luke Cage. He was, like, the best character. Like, I don't even... I'm not going to lie to you, Brian. It's been so long since I've seen Luke Cage. I don't even know who Fish is. He was the mentor who played chess. Oh. In the barbershop. Oh! See, the only characters I, ca I was thinking of with Luke Cage was Misty Knight, uh, Cottonmouth, and uh, Black Maria. I couldn't think of anybody. I was like, who is he talking about? Yeah, because in Luke Cage, you had, you had the guy who ran the barber shop. Oh, Black Mariah, that was who, her name. Mm -hmm. Who would play chess with a, another guy, and they kind of set up uh, Pop as like the big mentor. But then when Pop died, Fish became the new mentor. I'm, again, I'm gonna hear what you. I don't even really remember Luke Cage all that much. The only thing I remember is the end of season two. He became like the Godfather of Harlem or some shit. Yeah, and he was telling him and that was a stupid idea that he shouldn't do that. Fish. And uh, I didn't know this, but Ron Cephas was actually also apparently their first choice for. Uh, the wizard in Shazam. I could see that. 
He had, he had a, he had a but, very sagely voice. But he had to bow out because of uh, scheduling conflict. I mean, Guard of the Galaxy dude isn't that bad. He was a pretty solid choice. No, he isn't. And uh, actually, he will come back later. All right. J- Jijuan Hansu. Probably saying that wrong. Sorry. Oh, that's why I just called him Guardian of the Galaxy guy. But anyway, uh, rest in peace. For sure. And let's move on to the mad story. Okay. Freaking Bezos. Okay. Well, what, what did Amazon do now? Well, technically, Bezos Amazon... isn't in charge anymore. Yeah. So, freaking Amazon. So, you know how we have that strike going on? Okay. Well, apparently, Amazon Studios has learned the wrong lesson from it. All right. Because two of their shows... One, which was very popular in the LGBT circle, which was A League of Their Own, remake into a TV show where they actually, like, addressed the, like, lesbian undertones that the original skirted on. Wasn't like, that they actually physically A, a League of Their it. Own wasn't... Was, no, that, I'm thinking of She's the Man. I was like, wait, is that the one with the man defines where she pretends to be, like, no. a soccer bro? That was the one with uh, Rosie... And in the 90s, where it was about the female baseball team. Oh, okay. I knew it was a sports thing. There he is. He teleported in. Told you. I told there the audience. Is. I told you he would randomly appear like a random Pokemon encounter. Sorry. Was invested in something. Oh, okay. Anyways. Okay. So, what's, um, the, other, what's the other show? It's called The Peripheral. Never heard it's of this. It's a Chloe Grace Moretz TV show. Uh, apparently, it was really cool. It was like a VR sci fi action show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I heard good things about it, but both of them, they didn't just cancel, they unrenewed. Oh, damn. Both were renewed for a second season. And then they just recently in this last week said, nope, no to both of them. And they're clearly learning the wrong lesson from this strike. Now, that might not be the strike. That might just be cost cutting because Netflix has done the same oh. shit. Remember, inside job. Mm-hmm. Well, if I'm not mistaken, people are saying that they officially came out and said it was because of the strike. Wow. Uh, like uh, a league of their own had actually been renewed for a second but final season. Mm -hmm. And the creator had came out and said, yeah, our plan was for a two-season show. So we were totally okay with that. But now it's come out and the creator is rightfully so pissed on social media. They didn't tell him. Didn't see this coming. Well, damn, that sucks. That yep. Yep. corporation's gonna corporate. Yep. Yep. If it doesn't reach the bottom line, it doesn't make airtime. Yep. Um, moving on to our last story, which I'm glad Tony's here for mm. this. Mm. He might even know what this is. Mm. But uh, we finally got a Power Rangers update oh, for really? uh, Cosmic Fury. Hmm. Uh, basically, we got a confirmation of when it's coming back, September 29th. Cool. And it was confirmed two new cast members for this season. Okay. Mm. One is, uh, Fern, who is Izzy the Green Ranger's girlfriend. Which, that was obvious. Uh Uh-huh. And she's a very active person, so people think that she might be a seventh ranger. Which, given the footage that they're using, is a very big possibility. And the other one, the bigger surprise, Billy. 
Christy. Oh, shit, what? David, they got David Yost? Well, yep, David Yost. He did allude in Once and Always that he would be going into space. Oh, yeah. And, See, I didn't, think, I, didn't, space? I didn't think Once and Always was in continuity. It, it is. Um, <laughs> it, it was. Huh. I just thought that was from, just a one-off special. Cool. No, from what I heard, from what I heard, the way that they said it mm -hmm. was the the like first scene pre flash forward where they have all the rangers. Mm -hmm. And Trini is still alive yeah. in the universe. That's what I said. All the rangers. Uh, apparently that that take took place before Dino Fury. Mm -hmm. And then and then the flash forward took place between Dino Fury and Cosmic Fury. Oh, okay. Makes sense, actually. Interesting. So that would put yeah. uh, Trini's kid... What was her name again? My? Min. 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 There you go. I was like, it starts with an M. Min. It starts with an M. I was like, it starts with... I was going to say... I was going to... I was going to say May. But we get we got it eventually. Which you know, there is possibly going to be a yellow sword that needs piloting. Well, technically there so okay, so here's the crazy thing about that, right? Yeah. What they're doing is using from Q Ranger, the swordfish, the chameleon, the bull, the wolf, and the lion swords. And they're making the swordfish a shark. And they're going to give that to Ion, the gold ranger. Mm hmm So they're... Well, the technically, they're calling him, what, the zenith ranger? No, Ion is the gold ranger. You're talking... You're thinking of Zato, sir. Zato, sorry. My bad. My bad. I got the two aliens mixed up. Well, don't, don't, Tony. I'm not. No, I mean, what do you mean? Y'all can, y'all can go off. I'm, I'm enjoying this. We, we got, we. No, the, the, the... no, he stopped alluding to a spoiler. Oh, spoilers. Oh, okay, never mind. I wasn't even going to say that. Oh, I thought you were. No, I, I knew okay. spoiler, and I wasn't going to say it. Okay. God, Brian, yeah. what do you take me for? I mean, given my reputation. Uh, Tony? Yes, but not this time. I'm trying to evolve. Have you reached, have you at least reached level 16? You know, usually, usually, usually people, usually Pokemon evolve around level 16. At least starters. I don't know. You could be, a, you could be a two-stager, so it might take a while. But no. I will say I'd be one of those Unovanmon that evolve at level fifty or something. Oh, like Braviary or, or for some yeah. reason, for some reason Volibeat. I don't understand. Or not, I don't understand. Or Volibeat. That's how you pronounce it. Volibi, never under, yeah, never yeah. understood but, uh, why that one evolves so late. Okay, but, so uh, I have my own theories, but we'll talk about that later. Okay. But my point I is, I will say. I have my own like crazy speculation since they're only going to do ten episodes worth of Q Ranger footage, so that leads to very little Zord footage. Yeah, and um, one interesting thing is uh, when they made this announcement, they released a trailer. Uh, well, not trailer, but like the intro. Yeah. I heard about that but, with the opening, but I haven't seen it for myself because I actually want to see it when the show airs. Well, uh, I will say this: it, the intro is clearly for the first episode, mm. and you don't really see any new that much new footage. Uh, like, even for Billy, most of what they use is stock footage from the original or from Once Upon. Okay. And the rumor is that uh, they're going to be doing a new intro for each individual episode. Hmm. I mean, 
that would make sense for what they did with uh, Once and Always at the end. Yeah. From and also for guest stars, they can have a guest star in the intro for that episode. Yeah, which that would make cool. sense. And but yeah, but here's my question though, in terms of like a little bit of speculation station here. All right, could be getting a ranger form himself to maybe help out this new plucky team of rangers? Mm -hmm. I would I be, know. I'd be down, I'd be down for an old vet to suit back up. Well, here's an interesting thing, which this is kind of maybe a bit of a spoiler, but I. In the intro, I believe someone like actually slowed it down and caught a caught a still of Billy in Mighty Morphin uh, suited up in the Wolf Sword. Oh, interesting. The, mm -hmm. So he's in the Mighty. So he's in the he's, he's in his Mighty Morphin suit in the new Zord. That's okay. Now I'm intrigued. I mean, given some like plot leaks and other shenanigans I've heard concerning uh, what might happen in this, mm -hmm. it seems a good possibility. <laughs> nice. Yep. If you're talking about what I think you're talking about, about the Blue Ranger, yeah. Mm hmm. Because I've seen that too. But we don't really talk about. Uh, speculation here and yeah. leaks yeah so well that's why i said just a small peek into that so we mm. could just be wrong no no i get you and i'm totally with you on that but uh that's it for the news all right so uh now that we're done with the news we'll go ahead and jump right into that time once again it is screen time <laughs> For those of you who are new to the podcast, Screen Time is the segment where we each go through uh, what bits of media we have consumed in between podcast episodes. That could be TV shows, video games, comic books, manga, anime, anything in between. Uh, I'll go ahead and start us off because I was pretty light. Uh, I've been really diving back into uh, Like a Dragon Ishin, the uh, Yakuza spin-off game that is set in like the like in between period between like the Edo period and the uh Meiji era uh where you play as Sakamoto Ryoma slash Saito Hajime and it puts some really interesting alt history twists on things I've been having a blast I've been playing it a lot on stream on Twitch but I'm so interested in the story that I honestly am, I'm content. I'm probably just going to finish it off stream because I'm like, there isn't much left. And all I have left is like side quest stuff. So I might just finish it off stream, but I've been having a blast with it. I've been, I've been, you know, yeah, it's a game where you get to wield, you get to use a gun, a sword and a gun, your standard samurai sword. Or these hands. I have not leveled up these hands that high. I've mostly been using my gun and sword. But it, it's been fun. It's been a blast. Uh, in terms of other stuff, I have been uh, just in the background. I've been watching Superman and Lois. Or not Superman and Lois. Uh, my Adventure with Superman. Uh, we're going to do a podcast episode on it soon. So not going to talk about it too deeply. Really enjoying the show though. Uh, having a blast with it. Uh, I also decided just because I was curious about it, I checked out like the first two episodes of Masked Girl. Uh, mm. It's all right. I it's another one of those ones that's like a super slow burn. So, like, I uh. like I don't know if like it would be something that we'd cover. It's still it's definitely interesting, but. Uh, you know, I'm just going to continue to watch it on my own time. Other stuff. Uh, I got, I got in the mail the other day, a anniversary 
edition graphic novel of the death uh, like i think it's like the 25th anniversary edition of the death of superman i got it for free because i subscribed to uh, dc universe infinite infinite it's pretty cool uh it has a lot of it has a lot of really nice art and there's like some really interesting like stuff in the back where like it, it details kind of the the editorial process of the death of superman kind of more of like the stories of like how it, how they came to the decision of all right let's kill superman uh i don't know if you guys heard this story before but they, they mentioned it in in the in the um like little extra section essentially right don't uh, uh jerry uh like what am not jerry uh not jerry conway it was fucking um dan jurgens dan jurgens like you know every month they'd have like a superman family meeting where they discuss all right what are we going to do with the superman books uh you know for this set uh guys and then people just kept running out of ideas and then dan jurgens just kept yelling yelling in the meetings let's just kill him and eventually like it got to the point where it's like all right genius what's your uh, you want to kill him what's your idea and Dan Jurgens just whipped his dick on the table and was like, Doomsday. Bam. And the rest is history. Uh, but it's really cool. Uh, a lot of updated art, some just interesting behind the scenes stuff. I liked it. Uh, I, you know, I, I've grown to appreciate the death of Superman. Uh, because because of like you know what it did i don't appreciate the fact that it's created the revolving door but you know it is what it is um other stuff uh, is there anything else that i checked out um i did uh catch up on a, uh, a little bit of anime i've caught up on jujitsu kaisen and some of my seasonal stuff but nothing super major uh, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, Brian, what have you been consuming in between podcast episodes? Well, not much, but I did um, I did follow up what I said before uh, last time and uh, watched uh, the first four episodes, because that's all that's out, of uh, Sword AF, which is uh, Smosh Games version of uh D, D where they're playing D D. And it's a bit different but cool because similar to like uh Dimension 20, these guys are like improvisers first. Mm-hmm. However, what's different from like Dimension 20 is the story is classical fantasy, but also classic D D. But also, like, nine, uh, three out of the four players have barely played D&D before, if they have at all. Cool. So, they're new to it. And uh, the DM is never DM'd before. So, it's very learning as they go. Very... Um, open for new watchers oh nice and and also at least so far because this is more of a passion project than like something that they just like corporately put out Mm -hmm. like they're having to convince corporate that this is a good thing so at least for now any of the combat and all of that is just theater of the mind oh cool and it's pretty cool uh they've got some interesting characters like a halfling warlock who's the motherly figure of the group but she's also super horny all right so that's really cool but anyway i won't go into too much detail with that i watched all four episodes of that uh I will say that unlike Critical Role and all that, the longest episode to date has been one hour. Hmm. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then 
Uh, speaking of Critical Role, I don't usually mention it, but I am normally keeping up with it. And in the last episode, it almost brought me to tears, and it made me laugh the hardest that I've laughed in a while. Nice. And then uh, the last thing is just another follow-up of last time is I watched the sequel to 47 Ronin. Mm. Blade of the 47 Ronin. It, the Keanu uh, Reeves Ronin Samurai movie. Mm-hmm. This one, weirdly enough, takes place in modern day. Yeah, you mentioned. Yeah, I believe you mentioned that mm. last time. Yeah. Mm. And what the story is, is it is about a. Apparently, the. I think it's supposed to be the Blade of Keanu's character. Um, is meant to be reforged, and there's a prophecy that the last remaining ancestor, that the last remaining descendant, other way around, of the 47 Ronin is meant to wield it to defeat a great evil. Oh, uh, okay. Sta- it stars YouTube Zone Anna Kana. Okay, standard anime bullshit. Yeah. Yep, and the plot is very, like, Chosen One. All that. Um, but where it really shines is in the action, because the guy who directed it is like a... It's like a martial arts specialist and stunt guy. And they brought in some really cool stunt people to do it, to do like stuff like, uh, he's not the, like, he's a lead character, but he's not the lead, is, uh, the, uh, guy who's, uh, been playing Ryu in those, um, Street Fighter oh, web series. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stuff. He was Ryu in he was Ryu in uh, Street Fighter the Assassin's Fi- uh, Assassin's Fist uh, episodes one and two. They never came out with a third episode where they went into World Warrior, which is fucking pissed me off. But I get it. Machinima is defunct now. Well, not really yeah. defunct, but like not the same. But damn. yeah, cool. I'm glad he's getting oh. more work. I like that guy. He's yeah. who I wanted. And, uh, he's who I wanted to be. Iron Fist, actually. Yeah. Well, we got. And uh, <laughs> God, da- God damn it. And uh, the main bad guy's henchman is uh, actually uh, played by uh, Yoshi Sudarso. Oh. From the from One Power the Rangers? Oh shit! Yeah. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. And, uh, Yoshi, Yoshi is Yoshi's blue Dino Charge, right? I'll, he's blue Dino yeah. Charge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. Yes. Uh, he also um, don't know if they've come out or not, but it uh, did a uh, Nightwing for uh, the live action of uh, the. Uh, Wayne Family Adventures. Oh, cool! Oh shit! Oh, that's hilarious! Oh shit! That's that, re- that reminds me. I'll, I'll go when you. I'll go when you're done. But I did forget something else that I watched. You reminded me of that when you mentioned oh. live action superhero stuff. As is tradition. Right. Cool. Yeah. But uh, he's not the only Power Ranger in this. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Playing the the main bad guy. Who is a descendant of the witch from 47 Ronin? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is Daniel Southworth. Wait a minute. The, qu- Wait, yep, right, the no Quantum way. Ranger. <laughs> oh, shit. Hell Virgil? They got Virgil. No. Yeah. The Eric. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's Virgil from Devil May Cry. Oh. Oh yeah, that's also true. You know, you know, nice. like, you know. Remember, he fucking memed in the video game. But I need more quantum power. Hell yeah! I did. That's hilarious. Yeah. I did not realize that. But yeah. yeah, yeah. Eric, the quantum ranger. Yeah, Eric, the quantum ranger voices Virgil in Devil May Cry. 
Well, shit. Nice. Something new. You know, you never knew that. Yeah. Oh, dude. No. Yeah. I, like I, I reckon. Um, I, dude. Fucking Time Force is one of my favorite ones, and Death May Cry is one of my favorite video games. I love Virgil. He is the storm yeah, that is approaching. Um, and one other cool thing about this is, even though, even though, like ninety percent of our people are like martialists and samurai. Mm -hmm. They all have, uh, they all have different, um, like fighting styles oh, cool. with their sword. Nice. Like, um, the main female fighter, cause Anna kind of is like the stranger in the world joining. Mm -hmm. But the main female like fighter she fights with an offhand blade, similar to like Ahsoka. Okay. Okay. And then there's there's one side character who she fights with two hands on the blade, but she also heavily incorporates the environment around her. Oh, cool. Oh, so like uh, seeing things in the environment to use as an advantage to either for herself or to give her opponent a disadvantage okay cool i like that yeah like like there's one scene where she's fighting in a subway and mm -hmm. like pushes the guy against the subway bar to knock him out oh so, mm. some, so jackie chan type shit kind of mixed in with the normal uh, samurai stuff mm -hmm. cool and then there's a uh, one guy who kind of does a little bit of gunkata oh i love so gunkata Man fights and gun and fist. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, gun and sword. Mm. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and that's, then my, that's my preferred style in Yakuza Ishin, or like a Dragon Ishin. Uh. And then there's one guy who uh, does sword fighting, like classic ninja style. And then uh, Yoshi actually doesn't even use a blade. The main uh, muscle for the bad guy. Does he use these hands? He uses... No, he uses a, a kanabo. Oh, a tetsubo. Oh, so, he... so he uses a club. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So Big he... beefy club. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, that's the that's the that's the a, a kanabo is what uh, oni traditionally use in Japanese mythology. And what yeah. the preferred weapon of the oni in Dead by Daylight. Yep. Who is and uh, in right garb? Fantastic. Our homeboy Eric Virgil, he uh he doesn't even use a blade. Uh huh. He uses magic and these hands. Nice. Well, as he should. He is. He's one of those individuals that now really my my, my 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 question is: Does he all does does he yell into the camera that I need more power? No. Damn it. Ah, uh, come no. on. But uh, Damn, you in the end, this movie, this movie, the story is very paint by numbers, uh, chosen one type story, where we even have like a um, we have a uh, like Snape equivalent, a Voldemort equivalent, and a like. Basically, he's a Dumbledore equivalent, which I didn't even mention that before. Uh, that's a uh, Mark Dukakos. Oh, nice. Mm. Yeah, and, everybody uh, forgets that like he's not just Iron Chef Chairman; he's actually like a you know very decorated or, martial artist. Like, and uh, he's he's one who uh, does like classic, typical samurai type fighting. Makes Ooh. sense. Boss as hell. But but yeah, the action is great. It's very entertaining. It's like I said, paint by numbers. There are a couple twists that I saw coming. And uh it's really cool. Definitely like still keeps like the mythos and world building of the original. Just sets it in modern time. Hmm. And uh it's a Netflix original, and it was so good and did so well with them that at least pre-strike, it was uh, 
Green went for a three cool, a third movie. Nice. Sweet. All right, real quick before we jump into what Tony watched in between podcast episodes, the thing I forgot was uh, I watched something that is a bit controversial, or I guess the project got into some controversy because the director and the star turned out to be racist. Mm. Uh, so, But I checked it out anyway because it's centered around one of my favorite superheroes of all time. I watched Spider-Man Lotus. Oh. And I gotta say, it's pretty good. It's not the greatest thing ever, but it's it's pretty good. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Spider-Man Lotus is a fan film that got into a lot of controversy because DMs were leaked between the star who plays Peter and the director, and a lot of racist things were said. Uh and these and these these DMs mm-hmm. these DMs were confirmed to be real, and you know both people have since uh, you know released statements and apologies. So it was a thing that happened. I'm not just reporting gossip here. Uh, but anyway, I I watched it, and essentially what Spider Man Lotus is it is a combination of two Spider Man stories merged into one fan film. And those two stories are two of the most iconic Spider-Man stories out there. Uh, one of which is Spider-Man Blue by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. And the other one is The Kid Who Collects Spider-Man. Now, if you don't know what Spider-Man Blue is, Spider-Man Blue is a story by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale that basically takes place after the death of Gwen Stacy. And it's Peter Parker recounting like the entirety of his relationship with Gwen on a Valentine's day uh, through this whole narrative device of like recording a audio journal as if he's talking to her. And then the kid who collects Spider-Man is a story that actually most Spider-Man fans should be familiar with, especially if you watch the nineties animated series, because this was adapted into an episode. The kid who collects Spider-Man is a famous little short story that uh, was in Amazing Spider-Man where uh, Peter uh, uh, receives fan mail at the Daily Bugle from a kid who's a huge fan of Spider-Man. Turns out this little boy has leukemia. And so Peter goes and visits the kid and the, you know, he, you know, shows him how the web shooters work and it, uh, like... And he, uh, the kid ends up like kind of giving him resolve to keep going because he sees how much like Spider-Man means to this child. So it's interesting because like the kid who collects Spider-Man part of the of this uh, of the movie is really good. Like it's almost beat for beat, like that story and like just kind of uh, the actors interaction with the kid is just so sweet and genuine and it's it's just really beautiful there's a scene where like peter sees this drawing that the kid did of spider-man and the kid put his face on spider-man's body and the kid explains he goes well i didn't know what you look like so i just kind of drew me and that's so fucking beautiful because it reflects that old adage that stan lee said you know when i created spider-man i you know gave him that costume for a reason because anybody could be under that mask and it's just so nice now the the big negative i have with this story uh, with this fan film is the spider-man blue portion but before i get into the negatives i want to talk about the positives though the suit looks great it is a fantastic suit and in some of the in, in some of the shots with the better lighting you wouldn't you'd be surprised that this is a fan film suit it looks freaking fantastic and like there are only a couple swinging shots but the web slinging sequences that are, are in this holy shit like that looks like movie fucking quality. I was I was blown away. And also, they have an orchestral version 
of the 90s animated series theme song and it is fire uh nice so let me go ahead and talk about the negatives here nice so the negatives is the spider-man blue portion so i get what they were trying to do so this movie takes place shortly after the death of gwen stacy and so peter is at this really low point in his um in his life understandably so and so the kid you know, meeting the kid and, you know, seeing how much he insp uh, Spider-Man inspires him really kind of gets him back on his feet. And I get why that was connected and it works for the connection. But the whole part with him mourning Gwen and stuff and everybody in the friend group mourning Gwen, it just it doesn't work for me because they don't spend enough time establishing who these characters are before Gwen died, so I don't know why I should care, you know? Because if you don't establish who your characters are from the jump, no one's gonna give a fuck, and I didn't give a fuck. Because, <laughs> like, yeah, okay, I know who Peter Parker is, I know who Mary Jane is, I know who Harry is, but who is this version of Harry? Who is this MJ? Who is this Peter? What's different about them? This is a whole different universe. What's going on? How is their friendship important they kept talking about how they shared this you know the four of them shared this bond that was unlike any other and i'm like all right you're telling me this but where the fuck is it and also the, it, it just it felt a little weird to me because like peter was really mean to mj like and i i get it he was he's hurting he, like this the death is still fresh I think like it literally just happened maybe a week ago and they're all mourning but when MJ tries to comfort Peter like Peter just lashes out at her and does you know you you know not uh, not everybody can just move on all right look you know the part just just because just because you know everything's all sunshine and rainbows for mary jane everything's one big party you never take anything seriously you know you could have learned something from gwen and it was just like jesus christ parker what the fuck and like and the worst part is like when he apologized to mj mj is like no i deserved it i'm like no the fuck you didn't Call oh, him out! You. What is wrong with you? And I get what they're doing, right? Because, like, in the, in Spider-Man Blue, like, Peter talks about... Uh, he, he tells Gwen, he goes, you know, the night you died, uh, Mary Jane came to our apartment. And she, tr you know, she tried to, she tried to be there for me. And I was horrible to her. But, you know what? She still stuck. She still stuck by me, and eventually she taught me how to love again. Now she's my wife, and there's there's a beautiful moment at the end of Spider-Man Blue. It's the last page and the last panel, where he puts away he puts away the recording and he's uh, he's heading upstairs, and you find out MJ's been listening the entire time, and at first he's like, oh shit, uh, uh, because he thinks MJ might like be angry at him for like you know recording these uh, like love letters to his dead ex-girlfriend but mj just smiles and she says hey pete tell gwen i miss her too and i'm just like oh it, it, it's so it's so beautiful and if they had captured that this fan film would have been fantastic it's still really good, despite the controversy that, you know, it has with its stars. That doesn't mean that the people who worked hard on this film should not have their work seen. I still highly recommend checking it out. If you're a Spider-Man fan, you can tell that this has a lot of love put into it. Like in the sequence with the uh, where it actually shows Gwen's death. It's not as impactful as like Amazing Spider-Man 2, but one thing that I will say that it does have over everything else, it has Norman Osborn in a Green Goblin costume that actually is a Green Goblin costume. 
Now, gr oh. now, granted, the ma nice. the mask mouth doesn't move, so it's a little off-putting when he actually talks. But you know, when he's just gliding around menacingly, that's the Green Goblin right there. It's cool. I that is cool. again, I definitely recommend checking it out. I might show it to the guys after we after we finish recording this uh, episode. But yeah, Spider Man Lotus, it's great. All right, Tony. So, what have you been consuming in between podcast episodes? Well, a few things actually. I was able to catch up a few episodes into the first season of Brave and the Bold. Got to the point where we meet the Injustice League of Brave and the Bold's universe. Nice. And I've watched, finished the first season of Spawn. And then about to finish the second season of Spawn. I forgot they put Spawn on HBO Max. Yeah. Nice. I love the HBO Spawn series. It's fantastic. Nice. I love it. Then, uh, as of this recording, I'm pretty much all caught up with uh, My Happy Marriage. Nice. And, my God... Shit's still getting crazy on that show. I bet. And then something that just kind of took, like, enraptured me for a short time before jumping in the call was some more bonky nonsense. Ah, that's what you were invested in. I get it. Totally understandable. Because the fight scenes in that shit, crazy. Oh, yeah. I can How's attest that to that. Like, uh, the scene I was watching was Pickle was about to really throw hands with Hanayama oh, in the middle of the street you... fight. Oh, oh you're, you're in the middle of the street fight. Yeah. Then Baki shows up, sizing up Pickle and shit. And for the folks at home that may remember this, Pickle is a big prehistoric man. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a burly caveman that somehow made it to modern time because man fought and devoured parts of a t-rex yep built different they don't they don't they don't they don't, they don't make them like pickle anymore no no they do not <laughs> they do not and sometimes i think people shouldn't be built like pickle because no, man's shouldn't. crazy no they shouldn't He's a menace. But yeah, that's pretty much what I've been like invested in. And also, I've been really invested in uh, some of these new Pokemon shenanigans, which, by the way, DLC for Scarlet and Violet will be coming out on the 13th of September. I did, I did see, so I did, I still haven't watched the trailer, but I have seen some of the new evolutions. I saw the new Noctowl. Oh, no. no new Noctowl evolution. Okay. Oh, 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 I guess Hoops just put, uh, I guess Hoops just posted a Noctowl, uh, yeah. a fake mon Noctowl evolution. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was, so, cause I, cause I follow, I follow a couple of on, on YouTube and I thought, cause I, 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 I say, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh shit. My but, uh, oh, oh, but also as of today, they announced a new Pokemon oh, yeah? for the team. Mm -hmm. It's a very short trailer about this new Pokemon. I will say it is a Convergent Pokemon. Cool. I will not say which Convergent Pokemon, though. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about getting the DLC. Last time, it wasn't really worth it. I'm, I'm going to wait and see what people say. And how much content is actually in the DLC before I actually buy it. Well, and that's a fair thing. For me, I purchased the DLC ahead of time, so I'll be getting the teal mask on the 13th. Cool. 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 And uh, for me, I still have yet to start uh, Tears of the Kingdom, which I bought. Speaking of that, I'm close to finishing. I just have the big boss fight. Oh, you gotta fight, with... you gotta fight Ganon. <laughs> Yep, I have to fight Ganondorf. And from what I've heard, 
that fight is going to be grueling. Yeah. Because there's no, one thing yeah. I have mastered. Yeah. It's that. I, 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 I've heard. Point. I've heard. If you don't have all your abilities, that Ganon fight is a nightmare. Well, I have everything. I've just been doing side quests. But this one side quest that I've been stuck on is this goddamn cuckoo saying, oh, if you can reach the top of the stable, you might get something cool. And I'm like, bet. Give me something cool. <laughs> Only for it to fucking rain. And I look at this bird. And I'm like, you bitch-ass bird. You bitch <laughs> motherfucker. And you know what's the worst part about that, Jay? You know what's the worst part? For? What is that, Tony? I do not have the full frog suit to help me climb while in the rain. <laughs> Man, because birds, birds, just hate, birds just hate you in every form of media, don't they? Well, chicken specifically, because these cuckoos be telling me, oh, you think you mad shit? It's like, I know I ain't shit, man. Compared to you, you evil little bastards. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Oh. Also, dealing with real life stuff, I need entertainment to make me happy, damn it. <laughs> Understandable. But all right. Understandable. Forbid. If I don't. I can't find happiness. What will I do? So that's it for screen time. That brings us to trailer talk. Trailer talk is a segment of the podcast where Brian curates a playlist of trailers and we react to them after a short intermission, and then give you our rapid-fire thoughts on said trailers. You can find a link to the trailer playlist in the description down below, YouTube people, and people who are listening to this a day ahead of time. Uh, then Tomorrow, go check out the YouTube version, click that playlist, so you can also react to the trailers. But Brian, what trailers will the folks be reacting to tonight? Well, we got a bit of a Netflix sandwich. All right. Because we're continuing the train of doing three. Uh, first up is uh, the Scott Pilgrim anime. There's I, a trailer for it. I saw. I saw that. It's like a quick teaser, right? It's one minute. Oh, it's a minute. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel like I saw. Yeah, I feel like I saw that. I feel like I saw that. Because I, there was a trailer that came out for the new Percy Jackson, but it's only thirty seconds, so I didn't include it. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I saw. I, I, but, I feel like I saw the Spot Pilgrim one. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. But then um, a new show from Hulu coming out called The Other Black Woman. All right. It is based on a tw hit 2021 novel of the same name. And it is about a woman who works at a publishing company but she's the only black woman. And then another black woman comes in, played by Josie from uh, Riverdale. Oh, cool. And uh, she thinks that now she's found another black woman, an ally, but things start to go awry. And I'll just say that uh, two of the inspirations that the author has said for the novel version mm -hmm. were... Get Out and the Stepford Wives. Interesting. Oh, oh my. That's a, <laughs> that's a very cool, like, that's a very intriguing combination. Yeah. Get, yeah. Get Out is essentially the Stepford Wives for black people, though. So isn't that, that's kind of just double dipping. Hmm. Yeah. But she also said, inspired by several other, uh, novels mm -hmm. but won't get into that um but anyway it also has a lot of uh, familiar faces in it like dylan mcdermott and not dylan mcdermott uh what's your name will from will and grace oh cool uh and then um if y'all ever watched scandal millie nice i did watch scandal me and my mom watched um it. 
if you ever watched uh, Weeds, the oldest son from that. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Uh, Kevin from The Office. Dang. They got, they, got, they, got, they got a lot of that guy actors. In and actors. the Archer dude. And the Archer dude from um, The Boys. Oh, shit. Oh. Again, yeah. it's a lot of and that then, guy actors. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, we are ending with uh, a big one that just came out today of recording. Okay. All right. Re Rebel Moon. Oh, oh, the Zack Snyder Star Wars. Cool. Yup. Zack Wars. <laughs> Zach Wolves. I like that. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call it that from now on. Uh, it's simple, but I love it. Yeah, no, it's somebody's gonna make an opening crawl. Zach Wolves, episode one. Rebel Moon. The Rebel Moon. <laughs> All right, but yeah. That's exciting. Go check out that playlist in the description down below, and we shall return via the magic resident after this brief word from our non-existent sponsors. You can't see it, folks. I'm do I'm doing the inflatable arm two man man. And we're back. All right. All three of these trailers were pretty freaking dope. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about them. So Scott Pilgrim, not too much to say. Looking forward to it. It pretty much like looks like all the cutscenes from the game, and I thought that game was fucking awesome. So definitely looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for it, but I don't know if we could ever cover it because we've seen that story done multiple times now. I mean, yeah, but also it's it's an animated series, so they can do more shit with it than they could in like live True. action. So we'll have yeah. to wait and see. So I, I I still think it's worth covering, and plus they they're also getting everybody back from the movie to to like reprise oh, yeah. their roles. So that's that's dope. Um, yes, it is. Yep. Cool. So, uh, the, the next one. Uh, let's talk the other one. black girl. Yeah. So, the other the other black girl. Man, you want to talk Ooh. about some unsettling shit? I was I I was definitely intrigued and freaked out by uh, mm -hmm. by that trailer. I want to see oh, what the yeah. fuck is going on. I want to know that. That trailer definitely knew how to crescendo. Oh yeah, how that it for sure. Uh, speaking of crescendos, though, what a way to end it with Zach Wars. Zach Wars. Yup. Oh man, it looks badass as fuck. I'm not gonna lie. You can definitely see where all the Star Wars stuff is. Um. Yep. But like mm -hmm. that's not a bad thing cuz the Star Wars stuff is cool. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. and also it seems like he he's incorporating like going back to like what Star Wars started off with which is incorporating more of the fantasy elements. Well, yeah. Well, no, well this seems more fantasy than Star Wars. Like Star Wars is definitely more sci-fi. This feels like a mix of sci-fi and fantasy with the fact that they got like not not only aliens, but they've got like griffins and shit. Which, by the way, that one scene where the ho homie jumps onto that black griffin, holy mm -hmm. shit, that, yeah, that was, was cool. cool. Also, man thought yeah, it is. griffins were chocobos. Look, I I'm still I'm still holding to it. I for, for like for a good ch chunk of that trailer, I was like, oh, that's a chocobo. Look, I yeah. no, look, nah, dude. One day. One day I will see I will see a chocobo brought to life. But uh, from what I've heard from the the story, or at least how it starts off, is that it's very uh, going back to one of the Star Wars uh, inspirations, which is Seventh Samurai. Yeah, mm. I mean, duh. Where it's going to be about this uh, woman who's fated to be the chosen one. Getting together this group of guys. Yep, group of misfit warriors so. defend to def you know to def to defend a village. Yeah, standard stuff. Yeah. As, as long as like the plot doesn't need to be complex. As long as he uh, Zack Snyder can execute, it's fine. And if there's one thing I know about Zack Snyder, 
is that as long as Zack Snyder doesn't overcomplicate his plot, his movies can be awesome. And you know what? Even sometimes when he overcomplicates his plot, it can still turn out awesome. See Sucker Punch. Yeah. Sucker yes. A wild Underrated. Movie, but I enjoyed it because it was a weird fever. Dream. Yeah. I, haven't, look, I mean, look, no, dude, matter, no, matter, scene of... no matter how many times you watch Sucker Punch, you can never truly explain to anyone who hasn't seen Sucker mm-hmm. Punch what the fuck happened in Sucker Punch. Mm-hmm. And dude, that scene alone where she's fighting the giants. Yeah. I still, my favorite part, my favorite sequence is that one weird, like, World War II scene where they're in, like, the planes and shit. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was, that was fucking awesome. Where we see these schoolgirl soldiers. Yeah! Oh, God. I don't know what the fuck, again, don't know what the fuck was happening, but it was cool as hell. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah. But it looks like it's going to be wild, weird, and exciting. Yeah. And it's and it's got a, a lot of familiar faces, like you know, as Brian mentioned before, Guardians of the Galaxy guy. Uh, I think the the the, the main chick is that that Sophia Butella girl that was in mm-hmm. Tom Cruise Mummy and uh, mm-hmm. and Kingsman. And uh, I think Nick Nolte's in it. Um, Sir Anthony Hopkins was the narrator. The narrator yep. Shit. Also. Also, uh, you didn't uh, see it, but uh, you might have not caught it. But in that final scene, it shows it. Um, standing behind her mm-hmm. is uh, homeboy from uh, Sons of Anarchy and Pacific Rim. Oh, cool. Charlie Hunnam. Mm-hmm. Nice. Good for him. The man that the internet tried so hard to get him to play Oliver Queen. <laughs> I mean, he looks the part. He really does. Like, if they ever made that, like, canceled Supermax movie, he would have totally been able to pull it off. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, Indeed. those are some awesome trailers. So let's go ahead and jump into the main discussion. First, let's just talk about our kind of initial thoughts. You know, what we thought about the movie, how we liked it, spoiler free wise. Uh, I'll go ahead and start. I thought it was fun. Um, not really much to say about it. It's basically a prequel to Journey to the West, uh, showing Monkey's origins and how he found the, uh, the Iron Staff, the Power Pole, or, the, you know, this movie just calls it the stick. Uh, it, it's fun. It gives the, uh, it gives the staff its own personality, which is a nice twist. Um, it's a pretty, just kind of, by the numbers, kids movie. Good action. I wish there was more. Uh, I wish that the uh, the villain uh, did a little bit more. Although he did get a good number, which made me just kind of think back to our previous conversation we had a couple episodes back. Disney, I want more. I want. A, I want villains again, man. I want my. Yeah. I want my over the top yeah. big villain numbers. I miss this shit. Where. Yeah, I yeah. That villain song, even though it was the gaudiest motherfucking thing on the planet. Listen, I'm gonna be re- the last villain. The last real villain song we had from Disney was "Shiny" in Moana. I'm just <laughs> saying, just saying. Shiny, and it's a good song, but I'm just saying that was the last villain song we've had from Disney. And oh. that dude wasn't even like the main villain. Exactly. I think the last time that we've had a Disney villain song where it was the main villain was uh, Mother Gothel. No, no, no. Uh, uh, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. Tangled was after Princess and the Frog. Yeah, yeah. Because Princess and the Frog was the last hand drawn. You're right. Okay. Uh, but Mother yeah. knows best. I fucking love Tangled. Uh, oh, yeah. But yeah. Um, so... Yeah, really, nothing much to say. Mon- monkey, monkey's monkey. <laughs> what, what, what more? What more can you really put? He has his own theme song. Still not as good as Puss in Boots theme song. Just saying. Definitely. 
Oh, yeah. Indeed. Like, who is your favorite fearless hero slaps way harder than the Monkey King's theme song? Mm-hmm. Like, mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah. Um, Lynn was okay. She was just kind of there. I, 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 I get the reason. Also, it felt weird to me that she was there because it was like, wait, 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 wait. Monkey is learning this lesson before Journey to the West. So what's the point of Journey to the West? So it kind of confused me at that point, but it is what it is. Uh, overall, pretty solid. Nothing to yeah. nothing to complain about. But yeah. Nothing to really um, like praise to high heaven, pun intended. Well, one of the biggest things that I liked about this, because I'll just incorporate into what you're saying, because mm -hmm. I mostly agree, is uh, Jimmy Yang as the Monkey King. Oh yeah, great performance. Yeah. For sure. And um, I will say one thing that was kind of a little weird, but I get where they were going from, is uh, Benbo and Babu definitely were very much uh, pain and panic cries. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Oh, it's like they're basically yeah. just pain and panic from her Hercules. <laughs> yes. Although I did enjoy their little fucking uh, peach tree sequence. That was hilarious. Yeah. Those yeah, Ubers were funny. I liked them. Yeah, they were funny. Which uh, they didn't overstay their the way, welcome either. Mm -hmm. Benbo mm -hmm. was a uh, Joe Koi. Oh, cool! Nice. And uh, speaking about voice actors, though, I do want to say that I do think that uh, Stephanie Shu was kind of wasted. Yeah. Um. She was the mayor's wife who had the uh Yeah yeah firework, firework. factory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was very much wasted. Yeah, I big I, name for such a small part. I know. I was expect I thought it would have been cool because I was expecting to see like Guan Yin or somebody. We just saw the Jade Emperor and the Queen. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and Yama. And Yama. And yeah. Buddha. Yeah. BD Wong, great test. Yes. Yeah, yes. great. BD, definitely the best parts about this were BD Wong and Jimmy Yang. Yep. Uh, Buddha Wong. Buddha Wong. Yeah, BD Wong. Yeah. Buddha Wong. I know, it's, it's ridiculous and I like it. Yep. Oh, shit. Uh, Second week in a row of BD Wong. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> that is true. That's a funny coincidence. He was he was in Heart of Stone. Look at that. Man. That is a funny coincidence. That is a really funny coincidence. Huh. See, audio people, you don't you don't get to see our faces when we have these sudden realizations. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. So Tony, what did what did you think, spoiler free wise, of Monkey King? I definitely think that Monkey King did I I like this movie. I like it for what it what it is, and it's great. But there's some things that just kind of turned me off. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. It's like No, I feel you. I was watching a Disney movie that didn't feel like a Disney movie. No, this okay. So like before, before we jump into spoilers, I will agree with you. I think my my negative about this is that this feels like you know how there's like Aladdin, and then there are those other there are those other movies like Alibaba and the Forty Thieves, which is just those off brand, totally not Disney. Disney movies like if you ever watch Saber Spark's channel Saber Spark covered a lot of those yeah like this oh, yeah. feels like that and not in the cheap way that those movies do but it feels like this is Netflix's attempt at Disney and it's like it's close 
but there's just enough difference where you notice it and it kind of bothers you. Which yeah. the interesting thing is, uh, is uh, this director mm -hmm. also directed uh, Open Season. Oh, oh the, the fucking oh. The, the comedy with Martin Lawrence and Ashton Kutcher? Mm -hmm. yeah. What the fuck? All right. Go off, King. You do you, man. Um, but yeah, this guy, this guy knows how to do stuff that like skirts. Like I never saw it, but he also directed box trolls. Like it's weird. Like it. So, an example, right? Anastasia feels like a Disney movie that was not done by Disney, right? That was right fo that was Fox. But like it's so much like Disney that when it got when Fox was bought by Disney, Anastasia fits right at home with the Disney stuff. But this it feels like super close to Disney, but you can definitely tell it's a we have Disney at home type mm -hmm. of movie. Like I thought that it was so weird that uh we had we had the Monkey King song, which was awesome, but was a song within universe. And then we had the villain song, which was good, but also felt like why didn't we have more songs? Yeah, if you if yeah. you're that's, that's my yeah. that's my pro, that's my that's other pro, that's my other problem with the movie, right? Like as much as I like it, it felt like. And th this goes back to the, like the like trying to be Disney but not quite being Disney. Just embrace it then. Go full musical. Why are you gonna Why are you gonna just play just the tip with your musical with your musical numbers? Um, <laughs> Fucking just go all in. Yeah. Also pause. <laughs> this was all intended, so no pause is needed. Don't do Fair it. Seriously. Like, I, I I think this movie would have been so much better if there were if like there was like a like when Monkey has his like training montage in the beginning, like could you imagine how awesome it would be if there it was like a whole like a be a, be a man type deal? Yeah. Oh that, my god! Yeah, like, that would be so cool. But no. Yeah. No. We can't have nice things. Hell, I would have even settled, like, normally I don't like the whole, like, jukebox mixing in, like, contemporary songs mm -hmm. into, into your fantasy movies. But, like, if that training montage was set to, like, everybody was kung fu fighting, that would have still been awesome. Like, I, I don't get it, no. man. Like, we why, don't... why not go full musical? Uh, even an Eye of the Tiger. Oh man, that would that would have been good too. Solid choice, solid choice. But and you know what would be funny hmm. is if at the end of the whole so the training montage and everything, and it's like washing us all in the eye of the monkey. Exactly. Uh, uh, um. But yeah, so all right. So that those are our spoiler-free thoughts on uh, the Monkey King. Uh, I still say go see it, go check it out. It's yeah. on Netflix. It's worth a watch. It's a, yeah, it's a nice, fun movie. If you got kids, this is definitely a fun one to pop oh, on yeah. with the kiddos. Good like, kids, indeed. Especially to like slowly introduce them into the uh, Chinese mythos and you'll and you'll yeah. still enjoy it I'll, by the way though if you want uh, if you want a deeper dive into Chinese mythology go check out American born Chinese over on Disney plus we also did an episode on it future Brian put the card over my head please all right do it if I remember I will watch the footage Brian the footage will remind you Look back to the footage. Look back. All right. So, with that being said, we'll give you your customary warning before we jump into spoiler territory. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. So, 
now that we've gotten the spoiler free people out of the way let's talk about it so uh i didn't really like the whole giving the staff a personality and talking thing felt like it was unnecessary well it was, it was I, like it was like like giving it a personality is fine. I don't think it needed to talk, even if it was just. No, I didn't mind that. It was another. It was, I don't know. I guess because for me, it was just another one of those things. Like, oh, you're you're trying to do the Disney animal sidekick thing. I see but what you're doing. We, I get that. I get that. But uh, we, I think the biggest thing is that we didn't need that and the human sidekick. Yeah. If we had just had one and not both. Also, like I mentioned before, Lynn is a fun character, but I don't understand why we teach Monkey this lesson before Journey to the West when Monkey mm -hmm. learns this lesson in Journey to the West. What's the also, what's the point? You get where I'm coming from, right? Very Tony? stereotypical. Yeah. Cause like cause you you know you know Journey to the West. This is this this is the same lesson he learns. Don't be an arrogant dick. Look out for people. Help your friends. If he learned this lesson, then his fucking quest would Stanzo and Pixie and them should be a breeze. Yeah. What the fuck? I don't get it. I don't understand. Also, her story was very, very, very cliche. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And so, also, was I the only one? Like, this felt super rushed. Yes. Yeah. That's that's what it was to me. What the fuck? Because, like, everything was happening at, like, a breakneck speed. Like, you know, we get we get adorable baby monkey, which, by the way, I want a plushie of baby monkey. Baby monkey is the cutest mm -hmm. thing I've ever seen. No. No. Like, get on that, Netflix. I'm still waiting on dog. I'm still waiting on baby dog. But also, baby monkey. Give, yes. give the people what they want, damn it. Shut up and take my money, Netflix. I'll buy it. Do it. Like, you won't, right now, cowards. Yeah. Cowards. But seriously, though, it felt super rushed. Like, one one second, one second, we got an adorable baby monkey being exi uh, like, exiled and ostracized by the other monkeys and that fucking bitch-ass old man monkey. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. old man monkey. You are a pebble. Because he's fucking yeah. stupid boot shorts. Yep. Nobody, nobody likes you, old man monkey. Um, and then, yeah. and you know, and then we get like, you know, one we get one fight with the with like that that like tiger leopard demon, and then like just a really rapid fire montage of the other hundred demons that he fights to get heaven's attention, which which mm -hmm. I okay I will say that animation. That yeah. animation was great, oh, but yeah. it like came out of nowhere and also made the lackluster animation of the rest of the movie even more <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Oof. Cause, Just like, cause, like, Cause like in my in my opinion, right? Like if you're gonna do a Journey to the West prequel, Monkey Fighting a Hundred Demons could be its own movie. Yeah. And then you end the movie with the fucking with the Jade Emperor being like, "All right, this this motherfucker's causing too much trouble." All right, Buddha, I know you said to leave him alone, but uh, we gotta we gotta fix this guy. Trap man in the mountain, trap the monkey in the mountain. End the movie. Yeah, like that's all you but, really had to do. And also, in terms of villain songs, like for me, I like jazz, but the. But the Dragon King song was garbage. Yeah, he was garbage. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the like the song was lackluster. The the Dragon King himself was a very lackluster villain, 
And like his gag, yep. his gag with getting all dried up and shit got old as soon as it was introduced. Yep. It was weak the moment that we saw that thing. Like there are so weak many, there are so many iconic, like one off bad guys in this long ass story. And you chose the Dragon King. Yeah, man. We couldn't get the, we, could, we couldn't get the ox demon. Or, you know, the bull demon, you, wh whichever one, it's ox and bull, depending on the translation. Yeah, I mean, hell, back in more Chinese, yeah, made I'm, that I'm their saying, main villain. I'm yeah. saying, because he's more interesting. Yeah. Which, by the way, Tony, cool did you too. finish the, did you finish the last ah. two episodes? Oh, shit, you did. <laughs> I was going to ask you if your opinion has changed now that you finished it, but never mind. No, it's one of the many things I still need to finish. God all right, fucking you, did. All right, you have homework now. More homework. God. Now I'm fucking... Ugh. Anyways. But yeah, he was he was really whack. He was whack. Whack as fuck. I, whack as fuck. Oh, yeah. And like, I don't know. I don't really understand Lin's motivation all that much. Like... Your village didn't... They didn't really seem like they hated her. No, it wasn't that they hated her. It was that she was sacrificing herself to help her village. Oh, okay. That, that's where I got confused. Because it's her whole thing was that if you go back to her village and you look, it's a very uh, dry, barren wasteland. Yeah, yeah. And they need water for crops, so... Oh. She may uh, deal with the devil, basically. Yep. And, oh my god, the Dragon King was not reliable. Yeah, big shocker. You, right? Oh, okay, yeah. one, 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 uh, one other positive uh, and fun sequence that I will give them. I love their, like... So was I the only one who thought who uh, also thought back to Shrek two, in the scene where like they're fighting in the fairy godmother's potion factory? Cause like oh wow oh yeah in the now I am yeah the mom yeah cause that's in her house yeah cause that's a, that's a, uh, cause I was like oh this is just Shrek two when they when they fought in the fairy godmother's like potion factory but it was cool because it was different because like while monkey was doing all that crazy shit Lin was also mixing up the elixir of immortality which yeah take that she wong di <laughs> she so so remind the man that he fucking sucks <laughs> Choke on your mercury. Uh, <laughs> see, if, if you don't, if you don't understand, if you don't understand Chinese mythology or history, you will not understand that joke. Look it up, kids. Do your googles. Read books. Yep. Which, if you even know a monarchum of uh, knowledge about the Chinese mythology, this messes up several things. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it wasn't ever to the point where I was just like, alright, this is stupid. It, it, it's a kid's movie. I gave it a pass, but like... Come on, yeah. man. There's, a, there's, just a, there's just a lot of stuff where I was like, alright. Because I... Especially because, like, as of recently, because, uh, you know, Brian and I are going to be playing in an Exalted game, I've been looking up a lot of Chinese shit lately. Mm -hmm. So, like... It, you know, th this really threw me off. Um, yeah. Also, it didn't help that uh, we watched the trailer, and the trailer was good, but the trailer came out around the time of stuff like uh, Puss in Boots, the, the Last Wish, and Across the Spider Verse, and all that. And yeah. We were expecting like that level of quality. Yeah, because like so, because like as of recently, you know, we got TMNT, we got Puss in Boots, the Last Wish, we got freaking. You know, across the Spider Verse, all of those are bangers to various degrees, and this was just kind of okay. Mm -hmm. Like it, it wasn't. I hate to bring out the parent, but basically, 
I, I get the feeling that you guys are like that too. Where yeah, it's just like I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I'm like granted, I didn't like set this. I didn't set this uh, bar super high for this movie, but I I guess especially after coming off of and you know it's not recently, but we watched American Born Chinese like a few weeks prior to this, and that was fucking awesome. Oh yeah, so badass. Like. Their young monkey and that king. wasn't even animation. Yeah, and their young monkey king versus this young monkey king. No contest. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Nope. Seventies Wukong is the shit. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. the also, they never even gave him a name. That bothered me. Monkey King, lame as fuck, man. Or or monkey for short. Yeah, but I mean, but monkey has a name. Oh, the monkey, yeah. which is lame, but still, like it's appropriate because you know they call him monkey in the story, but monkey has a name. It's Sun Wukong. Come on, <laughs> man. Come on, man. Also, I I also don't like that they nerfed monkey because like they show like they kind of allude to it when he like accidentally eats that thing in Homegirl's like. Elixir workshop wizard mm -hmm. place. Uh, but like monkey can't shape shift. Monkey's supposed to be able to shape shift into stuff. Cause like one of his signature things throughout like Journey to the West is that he trolls people by turning into them and being like, no you. Oh yeah? You think you're cool? I can be you, but better. Yeah. Also it's a bit inconsistent because they definitely associate the eye beams with him being a kid, but they never come up again. Yeah. Until he's turned back into a kid. Yeah. Where did the eye lasers come from? Is, uh, is he Superman? And and where did they go? Is, it, is, is that his real name? Is he not? Is he not Sung Wukong? Is he actually Beppo the Super Monkey? Oh no. <laughs> Plot oh, yeah. twist. This movie was just about Beppo. Oh, that shit. We, we cracked the code. We did it. We did it. We this figured was, it out. This was the secret origin of Beppo the Super Monkey. That's why this didn't make sense to Journey to the West. Man's legend landed in ancient China to whip ass, but instead... Man, you know, those fucking Kryptonian wormholes are a motherfucker. Right? Jesus. Indeed. Uh, but anyways, so uh. let's just go ahead and go down the line. Final thoughts and ratings. Uh, clearly, <laughs> clearly, like, we, there isn't really much left to say about the movie. We enjoyed it. But, yeah. But it, it has its issues. Mm -hmm. Let's just say. Yeah. So we'll start. We'll start with you, Brian. Like we said, I enjoyed it overall. But like, yeah, we said there are issues. Like the the clone fight was cool. I like that one. Mm -hmm. And some of the action scenes were done well, but not all of them. And. Like I said, the best parts, though, were Jimmy Yang and B.D. Wong. Yep. And I did enjoy it, but I think, overall, I'm probably going to have to give it my lowest, I think, my lowest Challenge Chasers rating of all time. Oh, uh -huh. yeah? Uh, I think, in the end... It doesn't even matter. I'm going to go with... Uh, 6.5. Whoa, oh. you went low. Oh, tradition continues. I'll go next. Oh. oh. I'll go next. I gave it a 7. <laughs> I gave it a 7. Um, Pretty much for the same reasons. Like, I feel like if they didn't pussyfoot around and just went full musical with it, 
I would have enjoyed it more. But like yes. they had this like the, like I said, they were just playing. They were, they kept playing just the tip. Like you you mm -hmm. you know you, you have like a couple songs here and there. You're afraid to be full Disney because you're not a Disney thing. Fuck it, just do it. Cowards. Weak weak ass bitches. Also, like the recycled animation was very clear in certain parts. Mm -hmm. I get it. You're, you know, you got a budget, but like, do a better job at hiding your cut corners, fam. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I mean, also, you've got to think about it. You got to think about this, which I didn't even like realize. You know what, also, is a Netflix animated movie that just recently came out yeah, Nimona! exactly oh. yep. bro and, and and that's and that's the reason why i say this movie has no fucking excuse because we like Nimona was a lost episode mind you so you guys didn't get to hear us fucking you know like gush about this movie but Nimona is awesome. And Nimona has a very simple lesson, very similar to this, but it's handled so well. And it even has like a really dark, nuanced twist mm -hmm. that's just so awesome. And you compare it to this basic cookie cutter yeah. kitty lesson. Cause... And it's just like, yeah, meh. Because if I'm being honest with you, I think. Nimona is probably going to be in my, like, top five of the year. Oh, yeah, same. Same. Definitely. But this one? Like, you know... Definitely I... front runner for, for the worst that wasn't bad. It's pretty... For... See, I don't think bad is the right word. I think the best way to describe this movie is forgettable. Like... Oh, yeah, indeed. I guarantee That's you, part I'm of the not reason gonna why I uh, shit about this movie. Like, come next week. Yeah, that's definitely part of the reason why I gave it such a low rating, and why I kept like spacing, doing my typical uh. Mm -hmm. It's because I was trying to remember it. Exactly. All right, so Tony, what do you give this movie? Six. Oh wow, we're going. So we got six point five, six, and seven. All right, interesting. Trivia. Villain was weak as shit. I felt nothing. Damn, this movie hurt Tony. Man, it really did. You could you could just tell him. Like, it. Okay. It, it's uh, look. I get trying to feel like a Disney movie. That's fine. That's grand. That's dandy. But when you half ass shit. That's when I just like, yeah, I just become the disappointed parent. <laughs> I don't want to be the disappointed parent in the room. It is pretty half-assed. I'm not gonna lie. It's weak. Yeah. Uh -huh. Why? A lot of, a lot of wasted potential. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. And see, folks. Uh just because we have pro we promised to co only cover the stuff that we you know we enjoyed doesn't mean we're not going to have you know somewhat negative coverage sometimes we're just not going to full on shit on everything anymore you're not pressing the button yeah. Brian. damn it i was pressing the button like right above it <laughs> it's okay. i was i was just going to say and let's hope that that does not continue with next week. All right, Brian, a perfect transition. Tell the folks at home what we will be covering next week for this final week of movie month. We will be ending it by breaking our streak. Because for the longest time, we've been doing stuff that we saw trailers for. And this one, we are not. Mm -hmm. We are covering the already released um, movie on Netflix, Zom 100, the live action movie. Yep. Uh, 
I I haven't seen the anime yet just because I didn't want overlap. Like, I know the anime is out, but I have avoided it so that I don't, like, spoil myself. Well, it's weird because it's not the anime is out, out. The anime is, like, five episodes in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, or I guess, I mean, the reverse. If I, because if I watch, if, if, because watching the movie, it might, I, it might just spoil the anime. So, yeah, we'll, 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 yeah. See, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I'm excited for it, though. Uh, also, if I'm not mistaken, I believe at least for this new incarnation, this is our first time covering something Japanese. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, wait, no, that, that was a lost episode, but we did cover Alice in Borderlands. That was Japanese. Mm -hmm. But it was a lost episode, so yeah, this is our first time, hopefully... You know, they'll actually appear to the people. And it was for the incarnation right before this. Yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, you're right, you're right. But yeah, Zom 100. We get to do uh, zombie stuff, a full, you know, a full two months before we get into spooky mode. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Hopefully you are too, uh, folks at yeah. home. And we hope you enjoyed uh, this episode of the Channel Changes Podcast. Until next time, we'll catch you later. Tell all your friends in heaven, hell, and all the places to subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Spotify. Peace. Catch you next time, beautiful so-and-sos.